Now, a lot of you know a little bit about storage networks. What is a storage network? You've got two main things. If you're talking about a corporate environment, this is somebody who works in a company and they've got a whole bunch of server equipment, network equipment. Some people like to have storage units at home. And essentially you're gonna have a storage unit because you don't wanna have a whole bunch of USB sticks. There's USB sticks everywhere. Some people have got hundreds. No, probably not hundreds, maybe about 10. USB sticks sort of floating around. USB thumb drives, two and a half inch ones, three and a half inch ones, maybe bigger ones. And they're just everywhere. There's no backup. So if it fails, then you're gonna go crazy because you've lost all of this data. Data. You're giving it to your friends and to your family who will plug it into Max and it doesn't work on a Mac. Well, the answer to all of this is a storage network. Now we're talking about two main different ones here, uh, a NAS and a SAN. Now there is a difference. You've maybe heard of those two terms. A NAS is a network attached storage. That's what it stands for. And a SAN is a storage area network. Now, hey, they sound fairly similar. Aren't they the same thing? No, not really. Physically, when you look at a SAN, when you look at a NAS, they're going to sort of look the same. And some people will say, oh, but isn't just a NAS normally a little bit smaller and a SAN is very big? Mm, yes and no. It really depends on the scenario, but not always the case. It's actually talking about the underlying technology that is used that determines if it's a NAS or a SAN, not so much the size, because you can be in a company that has a massive, massive NAS and a very, very small SAN. The other way is also true. Now, before we do get into it, why don't you let me know how many USB hard drives do you have? Let's see who has the most USB hard drives. Also, add up how many gigs or terabytes of data you've got across all of your USB hard drives. And also, because you're on the interwebs here on the YouTube machine watching this, uh, you're probably not subscribed because a lot of you are not subscribed and you'll find it helpful because you'll like my future videos. Hopefully you do, anyway. Okay, now I'm just gonna start by sort of saying that for most people at home, they're probably not gonna go and use a SAN, probably not, unless they're a bit more techy and they want to do some really cool stuff, they're probably gonna opt to use a NAS instead. Let's first define what a NAS is. So NAS, Network Attached Storage. Here's a picture, here's a NAS, right? This is what you've got. There's a NAS right here. This is a storage device, can come in two bay, can come in four bay, could come in five bay, could come in eight bay, 16 bay, 32 bay, etc. They come in all shapes and sizes. And inside of these physical units, they are containing hard drives. They could be two and a half inch, three and a half inch hard drives. They could be SATA, they could be SAS, they could be flash. They could be different sorts of combinations of those, different sizes, different speeds. At the end of the day, they're hard drives sitting inside a storage device. This storage device, has a lot of connections on the back of it. You're gonna have ethernet connections. You're gonna maybe have some USB connections. You're gonna have some other connections that let you connect NASs together if you wanna sort of do expansions and all of that. And that's really, really cool. And that's sort of the same with the SAN. Like before we even start talking about a SAN, it's more the software that we're gonna be focusing on where there are the differences right there. Back to the software. So the NAS, here's the hardware. The software, this is what's called a file-based solution, a file-based system. A SAN is a block-based solution. So they're the two main things that are different there. It can get confusing. File-based, uh, we are now talking here the same way that a standard file server would work. If you've got a whole bunch of files, you've got a whole bunch of data, you've got your movies on there. Let's say you've got some movies that you've, that you've acquired legally, and then your friend brings his laptop over, and then he can copy the files over. And that's gonna be using some protocols in the background. Those protocols are gonna be SMB or SIFS, KIFS share. It could be NFS or an AFP format. So there's various protocols, but let's just focus, for example, on, a, on SMB. You're gonna be using generally SMB when you're exchanging files between computers on a network. Well, on a NAS, essentially all you're doing is you're creating a platform for that thing to happen. You set it up, you configure pools, Storage pools, you configure a RAID, you set it up with RAID so that there's multiple levels of redundancy. If a disk fails and you won't lose data, check that out, learn more about RAID on that video right there. You're gonna create RAID, you're gonna create storage pools, and you create essentially shares on your NAS, shares that you are then sharing out to the network. You're gonna add particular permissions onto that so that specific users or, spe or specific computers on a network can access it, they can connect to it, and then you can get the data that is sitting on the NAS. And the NAS, essentially, you just use it as a file repository. That's essentially what a NAS is. It's a file-based storage solution. And of course, there are all these other bells and whistles that you can sort of set up 
on a NAS as well. They've got their own operating system. They've got their own app store. So you can install all these apps on the, onto them as well. You could run Plex on it. You could run WordPress, like your own website, but its main purpose is gonna be file-based for storing files and sharing them out on the network, right? Now, SAN, what is a SAN? Storage Area Network. A SAN is block-based, as we said. So unlike a NAS, where you create your RAID and your storage pool, and then you create your shares, which are SMB or SIF shares, right? So you can share on the network over that protocol. On a SAN, you're also creating your RAID and some storage pools, but now you're creating what's called LUNs. Stands for logical unit number. And really what it is, it's just a container. It's a block container. You can't really navigate to that LUN. You can't just copy data to a LUN the same way that you can over the network to a SMB share that you've created on a NAS. Generally, what you're gonna be using this for is for hosting something, maybe such, such as a virtualization uh, environment. Maybe using something like VMware or Citrix and you've got a whole bunch of VMs on there. And those VMs physically are gonna be sitting on a SAN somewhere, and they're using the block-based technology. We talked about the SIF share and the SMB share and NFS and these other protocols on the NAS side. Well, on the block side, you're gonna have iSCSI or Fiber Channel. You've also got Fiber Channel over Ethernet, but we're gonna be just focusing on the iSCSI and the Fiber Channel here. And what you're gonna be doing is when you create a LUN, on a SAN, you give it a protocol. What protocol do you wanna be running over? Let's say you wanna be running over a fiber channel network. Well, a fiber channel network is very, very different to a standard ethernet network. If you think about a standard ethernet switch where you're plugging in all of your network cables, uh, sort of the same. You may have a fiber channel network which has a fiber channel switch with fiber channel cables running into it instead of a network cable. You can also get a fiber channel card for your computer, for your server, or you can use iSCSI and iSCSI can run over an ethernet, so a normal network cable. It's actually gonna be passing an iSCSI packet protocol over that ethernet cable. And all I'm doing is on the SAN, I'm initiating my LUN to be a iSCSI protocol. When you're creating your LUN, you may be able to actually say, I only want these computers to be able to get access to that LUN. And then those servers will have to have a iSCSI initiator set up and then they can actually go and talk on the block-based LUN on the SAN and then connect to it that way. Now, the great thing is VMware, you can create yourself a iSCSI initiated directly on VMware and scan the IP address and actually find the storage that has been created for it. You can even create an iSCSI initiator on a Windows server. Now that may have been super, super confusing to you. And trust me, it is confusing when you're first starting to understand this. Uh, why don't you let me know in the comments if you are completely confused or if this actually made sense to you. But look, if you do want to learn a little bit more even about this, if you want to actually see physically what a SAN and a NAS uh, looks like. I've got a whole length of training courses available. Click on those links, you can direct yourself to those. Please do also subscribe, I really would appreciate it. And I release videos all the time, so you will always stay up to date with what's coming up on my channel. That's it, thanks so much, like as well. We'll see you next time, bye.